American Diabetes Association actually finally got back and they agreed to an interview. Preparing for their American Diabetes Association interview, I took a look at their diabetes diet and meal plan recommendations and they were loaded with foods associated with causing diabetes. How could they expect people not to get diabetes if this was the food they're recommending? And then, I saw multiple peer-reviewed studies published on the National Institute of Health website showing that a low-fat, plant-based diet was more than twice as powerful at controlling and even reversing diabetes than the ADA-recommended diet that included meat and dairy. Well, the mission of the American Diabetes Association is to identify a prevention and a cure for diabetes, but in the meantime, to improve the lives of all people who are affected by diabetes. And uh, what's the best way to prevent, to prevent this? For type 2 diabetes, it's unclear. We can't prevent type 2 diabetes in everybody. When we are doing the research, we came across a lot of studies that said um, that you actually could potentially cure or reverse diabetes with a purely plant-based diet. I don't believe there's sufficient evidence to demonstrate that. How does it compare to the ADA diet that you recommend? We don't recommend a specific diet. We recommend, we recommend healthy eating. The one that's on the website. The... We recommend healthy eating. There do you, is. Do there you have is... a whole? Uh, you have a whole list of exact day-to-day -day, the meal plan, the whole meal plan. All they are are selections of foods to consider. We do not have a diet, diabetes diet. But with with that selections that you consider that that plan compared to an, a plant-based plan. No one's done that study. We found actually some studies, that a 74-week study found that low-fat vegan diet versus the ADA plan in type two. I think we're done here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into an argument about Oh no, I was just wanted the studies of, uh, the studies of, the, if, if, if this is true or if it shows that. Or if... Any diet works. Any diet works if people follow it. But if it's a diet that's not the proper diet, like if anyone follows a diet that they eat I can't, I can't tell you what a proper diet is. I can tell you what an improper diet is. So then we can talk about the good diets. I'm not sure why. I'm, I'm not going to get into that. Into diet? No. Well, if, 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 that's, if that's where you want to go with this, I'm sorry, I'm not the person that you should be talking to. And why is that, though? If that's what you want to get into, I'm not the person you into need to be diet? talking to. Who do we talk to about diet? You can talk to anybody you want. But that's interesting, though. Why not recommend a diet? Because the data to... don't exist to support it. But if I see, we see data that we looked up, that supports it with, like, you know, the NIH, the uh, in Europe, the European, European We're done. We're done. I'm sorry. I'm not going to get I, no, into that argument in, with but you. I, no, it's not an argument. I'm not going to get into why the argument. It, why is it an argument? It's just uh, talking about in European study of diabetes and other places that have studies, why? There are lots of studies. Why is it even an argument? There are lots of studies in the literature, many of which have never been replicated or, frankly, are wrong. That's why we do peer review, OK? The European Association of Study of Diabetes has been peer reviewed? Or I don't know diabetes? what study you're, you're referring to, and, and in the absence of being able to see that study, I'm not going to comment. I could show it to you. I'm sorry. I don't have the time for that. I just don't understand why it's an argument, though. Or, okay. That was interesting. What he wanted to talk about was people living longer with diabetes. But once you mention eliminating diabetes or prevention, oh, Whoa, now you cross the line. Prevention and cure, whoa. Whoa, let's not go there. Not only did Dr. Ratner, the chief medical officer of the American Diabetes Association, not want to talk about diet, but the fact that he had such an emotional reaction to my question made it feel I was digging into something that he didn't want uncovered. I had always thought there was no prevention for type 1 diabetes, but then I did research and came across countless studies referencing the link between exposure to dairy at a young age and type 1 diabetes. 
I mean, this is a food made for baby cows. Cow milk protein gets into the bloodstream, and the body says, hey, this isn't supposed to be in the bloodstream. It makes antibodies to the cow milk protein, which then attack the pancreas and destroy the pancreas. How is this possible that ADA wouldn't have this forefront on their website? Why wouldn't they be warning all parents about this, even if they're only a slight chance? Why are they recommending people to actually eat these foods linked to diabetes? It seemed all of the large health organizations were encouraging people to eat the very foods linked to the diseases they're supposed to be fighting against. American Heart Association promoting beef, American Cancer Society promoting processed meat, pink ribbons on dairy products, and bacon-wrapped shrimp on American Diabetes Association. And then it all came together. What if? And there it was. The American Diabetes Association was taking money from Dannon, one of the world's largest dairy yogurt producers, Kraft Foods, makers of Velveeta processed cheese, Oscar Mayer processed meats, Lunchables processed kids' meals, and Bumblebee Foods, makers of processed canned meats. American Cancer Society was taking money from Tyson, one of the world's largest meat producers, and Yum Brand, owner of Pizza Hut, KFC, and Taco Bell. Susan G. Komen, who was supposed to be fighting breast cancer, was corporate partnering with KFC, Dietz Watson Processed Meats, and Yo Play Yogurt. And the American Heart Association was probably the most disturbing of all, taking hundreds of thousands of dollars from the beef industry, poultry, and dairy producers, and millions from fast food and processed food manufacturers. Every single one of these organizations was taking money from meat and dairy companies that are associated with the causes of these diseases. This would be like the American Lung Association taking money from the tobacco industry. I was sick of not getting answers. So I went to the headquarters of these organizations myself. We have to speak someone in person. There's millions of people dying from the foods that they are recommending people to eat. I wanted to find out why Susan G. Komen had accepted $35 million from YoPlay when their products can increase a woman's chance of dying from breast cancer 49%, and ask American Cancer Society if taking money from KFC and Tyson was the reason they promote eating meat. But every one of these organizations declined to be interviewed. What's really sad is that we cannot trust information from these leading health organizations like the American Heart Association, the American Diabetes Association, because they are taking money from the very industries who are causing the problems that they're you know, supposed to be helping to prevent. So that makes the, the truth something that you are not going to be hearing, uh, as far as nutrition goes, uh, from these organizations. Well, that would be the end of their funding, that would be the end of their jobs, that would be lawsuits, that they would bring the entire catastrophe down upon their heads, and they would essentially disappear as organizations. This one time I got invited to a charity fundraiser for the American Diabetes Association. And I showed up, and they had a whole buffet, and it was all just animal products. I remember like a big thing of barbecued chicken, and I, and I was like, I stormed out. I said, I said, like, serving chicken at a diabetes event is like serving alcohol at an AA meeting. It just doesn't make sense. We had scheduled to film an interview with a prominent surgeon, but before we could get inside the building, the hospital's media relations manager stopped us. Actually, I understand that Dr. said that you could film here today, but unfortunately that's not gonna be able to happen. Um, I know that he advocates for patients changing their diets, but the hospital makes money off these surgeries, and the reality is he does too. So uh, we can't do anything that's going to negatively impact the hospital, so unfortunately you're not going to be able to film here today. I was sickened by how open she was about the hospital being more interested in profits than people's health. But it wasn't just this hospital or these organizations, even the U.S. government is involved too. Every five years, the U.S. Department of Agriculture creates dietary guidelines for Americans. The committee who writes these guidelines has been made up of individuals who have received money from McDonald's, the National Dairy Council, the American Meat Institute, the National Dairy Board, the National Livestock and Meat Board, the American Egg Board, Dannon, Candy and Sugar Companies, Coca-Cola, and Anheuser, just to name a few, which means we are getting our dietary recommendations from the very industries that are killing us. And when they, the USDA, makes a pyramid or a power plate every five years for the American public. They're going to guarantee that on that plate are going to be foods which, when consumed, will result in millions of Americans perishing. 
Administration, the USDA, which is supposed to be protecting us, has two missions. It's supposed to protect us and it's supposed to protect the producer. And guess what? When those two come head to head, they usually choose the producer. In internal documents uncovered by Dr. Greger, the USDA admitted that eggs cannot legally be called nutritious, low-fat, part of a balanced diet, low-calorie, healthful, healthy, can't say it's good for you, or even safe. Yet they still promote these products to the American people through federal checkoff programs. If you ask somebody if they've heard of a checkoff program, the odds are they haven't, although daily they are seeing the messaging that these programs produce. So checkoff programs are responsible for the messages that we see on TV, on the internet, on bus billboards and magazines that say things like milk, it does a body good, or milk life, beef, it's what's for dinner, pork, be inspired, incredible edible egg. The dairy checkoff program gave $12 million to Domino's to just market cheese heavy products. And this is the USDA, this is the government. If you've seen those ads for the Pizza Hut pizza, the stuffed crust, or a pound of cheese. Those are all government advertising schemes for the industry. How can we put more cheese on beef? How can we put more milk in a coffee? Things like that to just drive consumption of these just unbelievably unhealthful products. So McDonald's, for instance, has six people staffed full time, according to records we found, whose salaries are paid for by this government program, but funded by the producers who are regulated by it. And these six people sit there at McDonald's headquarters and just come up with ideas. Triple cheese decker, cheese muffin stuffed bacon cheese slider? With extra cheese? No. Nice. Yes. You don't think of it on a day-to-day -day basis that these are government programs. The Wendy's bacon double cheeseburger. Government program. The steak fajita at Dunkin' Donuts government program. You would just never think that this just pure garbage from a food standpoint is coming from a federally funded program. That's one of the things that makes checkoffs so incredibly creepy is that it is our government telling us eat more beef, drink more milk, eat more cheese, eat more pork. One of the very effective ways that the dairy industry promotes its products is to reach children because Kids are impressionable, they're gonna be consumers for their entire lives, and you might as well get them while they're young. So dairy spends at least $50 million promoting its products in public schools throughout the country with posters, with people with milk mustaches, and messages like, milk it does a body good, or milk life. Targeting young people, right? The tobacco industry had to keep replacing their customers who are dying with new customers. The meat industry knows they have to target young people. That's why we have these foods in schools and marketing messages at a younger and younger age for kids to get hooked on all the wrong kinds of foods. So there's all kinds of parallels. School districts where processed meats are all over the place. Maybe it's going to be bacon on the menu, sausage hot dogs or pepperoni pizza. Any of those things are processed meats, and those are pretty much the worst of the worst with a direct link to colon cancer. I mean, and yet you have every day in the schools meal items with processed meats. If the Surgeon General puts warning labels on tobacco because of their cancer risk, why aren't the same warning labels on meat? Based on the publicly available data, we know they spend at least $557 million promoting their goods through checkoff programs. We know that they spend at least $138 million lobbying Congress. We expect that they spend a good deal more than that in figures that simply aren't publicly disclosed. The industry's lobbying power is so strong that they can create laws and push through legislation that doesn't benefit Americans in any way, such as ag-gag laws that criminalize whistleblowing or photographing abuses by this industry. Activists in the U.S. can be charged as terrorists for disrupting the profits of any business that uses animals under the Animal Enterprise Terrorism Act to the even more ridiculous ones like cheeseburger laws. A cheeseburger law is a law that says a plaintiff cannot recover against a manufacturer, distributor, or retailer on the theory that the food made the plaintiff obese or caused an obesity-related disease. Cheeseburger laws are a direct response to a problem that the tobacco industry has had. Big Tobacco has paid $400 billion to state Medicaid programs. Cheeseburger laws proponents say, we don't want to see the same kind of thing happen to the meat and dairy industries. The fact that these laws are based on a model template called the Common Sense Consumption Act is actually ironic because what they're saying is, you the consumer should have the common sense to know that our food is bad for you. 
I've often typified the meat industry to people who maybe don't understand its power and reach as it's got all the money of big tobacco and big pharma and it has the personality of the National Rifle Association. So any, any little thing that comes up, man, they, they beat it to death. Robert Martin wasn't exaggerating. When the profits of the egg industry were threatened by egg alternative company Hampton Creek Foods, extremely disturbing emails were uncovered by Ryan Shapiro and Jeffrey Light. We uncovered documents demonstrating the American Egg Board considers Hampton Creek, quote, a crisis and major threat to the future of the American egg industry. The American Egg Board considers a successful egg replacer company to be such a threat that they joke on their government email addresses about murdering the CEO. In internal government emails with the heads of the egg industry, they suggest having the CEO of Hampton Creek, Josh Tetrick, murdered, including a menacing email from the executive director of the American Egg Board. 